Pathmaker7 here, YouTube channel, My name's Ryan. Let's get the road on the show. So I wanted to put this video out, and I wanted to put it out early this morning, but I had some other uh, errands and some things to do, some chores, if you will. And um, so <clears throat> I wanted to get this out because I thought it was very urgent, um, just the way this whole thing transpired. Um, because I got up early this morning and was thinking about doing another video that's been on my mind. Uh, I actually have a list of certain videos that I wanted to put out. But I got up this morning and I was just talking to the Lord and uh, it was six something this morning. And I just felt the, um, like the Lord was just kind of nudging me to go, you know, lay back down and not really get up. So... I laid down, I just fiddled with my phone and saw a couple things on social media and responded to some things and then wanted to put my phone down and actually fell back to sleep. <clears throat> and when I did, I had this dream. So this is the dream and it's kind of a, um, I feel like it's something urgent because I wasn't thinking about anything. I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't see any movies or anything that would even, you know, even begin to come up with something like this. So, you know, I think it was from the Lord. And no, I'm not setting any dates before, you know, I talk about my dream. I'm just putting it out there. This is my dream. So <clears throat> the dream was, it was like I was uh, back in Georgia, kind of seemed like some landscape of a church I used to go to. So it was like a mixture of some church property where it had a parking lot, and a field, and then the church was up a little bit higher, and it kind of, then it kind of felt like I was uh, going to an interview uh, with a telecommunications company. I used to do telecom work for Bell South before it became AT&T, so it felt like a, a mixture of that. So this gentleman, I meet him in the parking lot, and we're going to go up to this uh, cell tower with this, you know, they usually have buildings where they do the, everything changes over, you know, from the cell tower to the landlines in these buildings with the, all the you know equipment, computer gear and whatever else is in this building at the base of the towers. So anyways, <clears throat> um, we're standing there and it's starting to get a little dark. Not like it was like starting to, you know, the sun was starting to go down. It wasn't like dark, dark, just the sun was going down and you couldn't see the sun it had gone down behind the trees, but the sky was still lit. And there were some gray clouds in the sky, not storm clouds, just they kind of get gray looking when the sun goes away, they're not so white. And all of a sudden, I see this gray streak go across the sky, would kind of look like, you know, a fireball at the end of it. And there was like a smoke trail behind it. And I, I told the guy, I, was that, I said, hey, did you see that? And he was like, oh, yeah, I just kind of like mumbled it off and didn't, wasn't really, you know, caring what I was. And I was like, no, it looked like a fireball in the sky. And he just kept ignoring me. He's like, yeah, hey, let's just go up here to this, to this building. So um, then all of a sudden, I see one kind of start to come towards us. And it was a pretty good size. It was probably maybe three feet in diameter or close to it, two and a half feet to three feet in diameter. And it looked like a black sphere. Um, I, I don't know what it was made of. I just had this understanding that I felt like it was from the Lord. It was God that was sending this down. It was not you know, an enemy. It was not a bomb. And it had this fire within it. It was kind of weird. Like I could see in it that it was a fire, even though it was this black metal object, you know, whatever it was and it had the smoke trail behind it and it was coming to my left and it landed in the field near us. And, and I said to the guy again, I said, hey, did you see that? And he's, yeah, 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 just ignored it. And then another one came and it was a little bit closer. And I just see him off in the distance and I, and I just understand, or I had this understanding that it was um, like preliminary. It was, this, this was coming and I was, it was just starting to happen like a little bits at a time. And I wasn't sure where the next one was going to land or what was going to happen next. And, um, and so I told him again, I said, did you not, did you not see these? They landed in the field right here beside us. And he was like, yeah, yeah, we just got to get up here. We need to go look at this. You need to troubleshoot this thing. It's, it was kind of like I was being interviewed, troubleshooting whatever this issue that they had in this building. And I said, well, St stick your hands up like don't you feel like the little there's like little um 
pieces like particles coming and they were like hitting my arms. I could feel them when I put my hands up and they were hitting my face like in the wind from the debris. And, um, and, and he still just kept ignoring me. And I said, I said, don't you realize there's a blood moon tomorrow? There's going to be a blood moon and it's very significant. And, and God's all into blood moons and he has these things for a reason. And I'm like, don't you understand this is going to happen tomorrow night? Isn't, isn't this important to you? Don't you, don't you think this is important? And he's like, no, no, just, we need to go look at this thing. And, he, and it was like, that was more important to go do that. And I felt like he was, you know, like, again, like it was, a, it was mixed, like, you know, an interview with church, like it could have been a Christian and it was in a church parking lot that I knew, I used to know. And maybe it was just the two worlds colliding with, you know, just me associating with people at church and people in life as far as work. Anyways, I'll kind of get to that after telling the dream. But when I said that, he just said, no, it's not important. And I said, well, you know, this is, this is going to happen. And I said, so I just kind of like, it kind of made me upset. So I said, well, tell me how that works out for you, you know, because, you know, at this point now it's concerning me. So we walk up to the building, we go in and I noticed it was like a refrigeration type system. Um, not a refrigerator, but like a refrigeration type system. And I notice there's a sensor on the back and then there's this other sensor that's sitting in this like plastic container at the back of the unit. <clears throat> and they keep, you know, use refrigeration to keep, you know, equipment cool because it does get warm. And I noticed that the sensor is sitting in water. The sensor had been flooded, like there was either a leak or something and it had gotten water in there. And so immediately I told him, I was like, well, there's your problem right there. I said, your sensor is flooded. And because of the sensor being flooded, there's no power. The power shuts off to protect all the gear. And I was like, and so when there's no power, I was like, you're not going to be able to communicate. We're not going to be able to get any communication out of this tower. And so, you know, he still kind of blew it off and, you know, okay, well, and then it was as if we got in a vehicle, we drove somewhere else, went to another location. And in this location, it was like, uh, the cell tower property or whatever, the telecommunication company had, you know, set up shop near, you know, some older homes in a neighborhood or something like that. And this house had been turned into like one of their offices. And so there was a kitchen and there was a, you know, eating area. And there was a couple guys taking break, you know, in the, in the house. And there was another telecom manager there. And so now I'm being interviewed basically by two, two of these guys and same kind of equipment, you know, refrigeration type thing. And on the back of this unit, another sensor and I can see in the sensor the sensor is literally um, surrounded by water so it's flooded again another sensor flooded and so I tell the guy the same thing I said look your, your sensors flooded it shuts off the power you're not gonna be able to communicate you're not gonna get anything out and so I'm telling him I'm like guys don't you understand this is this is more important than, than the job situation right now or this whatever we're doing the most important thing right now is there's there's a blood moon tomorrow night and there's there's these fireball things that are falling in the sky this is all like starting to ramp up and so the one guy that i had met with previously he leans over to the other guy and they're kind of you know chuckling and whispering each other's ears and they're kind of mocking me and laughing and i'm like okay well i guess you guys don't really need me so i leave and when i leave it was kind of like being in downtown atlanta and running through the streets while i was walking through the streets and um, there was this gentleman. Now, I know who he is because I've had this, this, I've had like several different strangers that show up in my dreams and they would kind of bully me or, you know, cause issues, you know, in dreams in my past, which I don't think I have time to even discuss those dreams. I think we're getting too close to the return of Christ. But anyways, I knew who this individual was and it was demonic. And this, this individual was demonic and it could have been a demon, whatever, but he looked like a man and he's, he's following me through the streets. And because of my other dreams in the past, again, I won't go there, but I knew that I had authority and he wasn't an issue. He wasn't going to, you know, he was trying to bully me. He was trying to mock me and he was following me with intent, you know, everywhere I went. And so he keeps saying to me, I don't know why you keep telling him. I don't know why you're worrying him. I mean, uh, ha, ha ha you know, and just kind of making his comments. And so I just, kind of pick up the pace and, and I leave the, the area and I'm just like, whatever, I don't have time for this right now. I've got, I'm trying to warn people. And so when I leave there, I go to, it was like uh, on the outskirts of a city. And when I get there, there's like a fair set up. Um, like, a, you know, the fairs that would come to town, they set up, you know, 
different rides and things, carnival type stuff. And there's a parade going on at the same time, kind of like, you know, we got Memorial Day coming up, so I don't know if it was because of like a Memorial Day type of thing. I remember seeing like some American flags and things and just, but it was kind of uh, like a parade with this carnival thing set up. And off to the right, um, there was these church pews sitting off to the side of the street. And so I look over, my wife's sitting there and some friends of ours that we know, they were sitting there and different people and they're all facing, you know, one direction. And so I sit down and I'm right on the edge of the pew, which is right next to the street. And I'm watching all these bystanders come, you know, or the people that are in the parade come, come by. And it, now it's getting really dark. Like the sun has gone down now. And all these people that are going by me are wearing skimpy clothing. And they're, they're you know, older, mostly younger, uh, you know, in their 20s or whatever, uh, or, or even maybe some late teens. And there's girls and guys, and they're all just parading through the street, and they're, they're laughing, and they're just being merry and just carrying on. And uh, I, I'm, like I said, I noticed that they're wearing these clothing, and they're very, you know, revealing. And one of them kind of walks past me, and she's wearing like a really short, skimpy skirt. And then she's kind of holding on like a top that was basically just laying on her. It wasn't even really like a bra or a bikini top. And I don't know if it was just the wind kind of blew and her, her, or if she just let it go and she really didn't care. And like the right side came off and revealed her right breast. And I made a comment to her and she's like, oh, Ryan, you know, and she just kind of played it off. And she knew my name and I don't even know why she knew my name, but she did. We let this truck go by. And um, so, you know, she just kind of went on, but then there was these other girls that were wearing like string, I mean, string bikini thong type stuff. And they're just, like I said, everybody's being reveal revealing and partying on and carrying on. And um, and so I made a comment to like about one of the girls and this other girl that had seen me make the comment. She's like, yeah, it looks like it hurts, doesn't it? And she just kind of laughed and whatever, ha ha, you know? And, and, and so I'm seeing all this go on and I'm just, deeply disturbed and I'm looking at the people that are sitting with me and I'm like they don't even understand that we got a blood moon coming tomorrow night and that these whatever these fireballs are that are dropping they're they're they're, they're just like hitting different places around the world and I had that understanding and I couldn't understand why they wouldn't listen and um, it was very disturbing and I woke up and here's what I get so before I left Atlanta and came to Florida going on two years ago which will be at the end of this week, which a lot of people are saying that the blood moon, because a full moon is on Passover, that this could either be second Passover or first Passover. I don't know, I'm not setting dates. I'm just putting this out there. As a warning, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm being, I've been a watchman my whole life. And uh, so this is what these videos are about. I'm trying to keep this video short, but at the same time, I'm trying to put out an urgent message because we have a blood moon that's gonna show up. Um, I'm going to put a couple videos in the description box talking about this um, very thing. Um, so we got a blood moon coming up. The Lord uses those things as signs. Usually they're signs of war. Uh, they're just they're, they're warning signs. It's not the blood moon is not like hey this is a great thing. Um, I've dreamed about moons, you know, on and off different things of rapture dreams. So again, I'm not setting a date. I'm just putting this out there because of the dream that there's a blood moon coming and if it is Passover and there is a resurrection and then there were there were people that came out of their graves which I think the Lord was showing us you know different things matter of fact if you read uh, there's four Gospels right well real brief I'm just gonna kind of take a little detour here Matthew Mark Luke and John okay it's four different accounts you ever wondered why there's four different accounts I'm gonna tell you Matthew is to the Jew Mark is to the sleepy church, and Luke and John are to the church, those that are awake. There's a different description of things, of events. I'm going to give you one of those. It was in John 20. As a matter of fact, I read it yesterday morning. John 20 speaks of uh, when the tomb was rolled away and, and Mary Magdalene, you know, she saw that you know, Christ wasn't there, and she went and got the disciples. You can go read the story. But one of the things that was in there that was very unique was when they went in, they saw the linens that were laid there. One of the things that was done, which I'm gonna put this video in the description box, is the head napkin, which was placed over the face, was folded. It's, it's a nugget, okay? And that nugget was placed there to show that he folded the napkin 
and placed it because he meant he was coming back. Well, when was he coming back? Well, when you come back, when, when, and like I said, I'm going to put the video in the description box. If you are at a meal, which that's what he was at before he was crucified, he was at the Passover meal, and he said that he, he wouldn't do this until he was in the kingdom with us. So was he given reference to the fact that it was Passover when he's going to come get his true church? Was it him folding the napkin to say that, the, that he was coming back to that same meal, he was going to complete it? And numbers... I think it's Numbers 10 speaks of the second Passover. So I don't know if it's second Passover, I don't know if it's first Passover, but I do know it's the springtime, and I do know that Song of Solomon spoke of the winter is past, the rains are gone, spring is here, come away my love, and summer is nigh, which means it's near. Does it mean it's here? It means it's near. So anyways, with that, we get back to my dream. Um, blood moons are important. Um, if you go three days from the blood moon, which we're going to have tomorrow night, you come to basically right at Memorial Day this weekend. Now, again, I'm not setting any dates. I'm just putting this out here as a warning because that's what I'm doing. I'm just watching and warning, just like other people that are on YouTube. So with my dream, before I left Atlanta, the Lord told me this would be the last house you own and the last job that you have. Well, because of COVID and everything else going on, this is where I'm at. So I don't know, but I've been talking to the Lord about that. I'm like, either hey, Lord, you're coming or, you know, things have got to change. Am I going to start a business? Am I going to do work? What's, what's going on? And you know my situation. And so that's just been my thing. But so in this dream, I'm kind of having an interview with this individual or actually two because by the, you know, the other manager that I met at the second location, but none of them found it important about the signs and what God is trying to show like hey there's impending doom coming and I'm coming to get my church and I've talked about this in the Bible it's in Joel it's in Malachi it's I mean several of the prophets speak of it so you know what's going on I mean so but anyways let me get back to the dream so the sensor to me was the sensitivity of people it's been flooded and it's been you know covered up by the world and they have no sensitivity and because they have no sensitivity to the spirit of god they have no power and because they have no power there's no communication getting out so this tower lost its power had no way to warn anybody to get the communication out because there was no sensor and because there was no sensor the power was shut off to protect the equipment so right away even as i was having the dream i realized that was the sensitivity that they didn't have. They don't have that. And I've had many a dreams in the past when I was growing up as a kid where, you know, I try to fly over power lines and I've done a lot of study on this where it was the power of the Holy Spirit, right? So I can go rabbit trail on that one, which I'm not going to do right now. So I already knew what that meant when it came to this cell tower and the other cell tower. Both of them had the same issue. No sensitivity. The sensor was flooded. And it was just because it was flooded with the world. Um, it didn't matter where the, the flood came from that caused that sensor to not work, but that sensor worked because it shut the power off. So there's no power, no communication getting out, so no one was getting warned, no one cared, especially the guys that were actually in management can, you know, over those cell tower sites. They didn't care, and they kind of mocked me, even though I felt like the first guy was kind of a Christian because of where I met him and just, you know, whatever else. So the church is asleep for the most part. There's no pastors getting up talking about the rapture. There's nobody warning anybody. So, you know, we're all these YouTubers and people on fivedoves.com and whatever out here warning people of things that are coming and what the Lord is showing us. I can't make a dream up like this. This is how the Lord speaks to me sometimes. He speaks to me, you know, through different ways, through his own word, through, you know, still small voice or his comfort when I'm talking to him in the morning or at night before I go to bed. You know, well, I talk to him all day, but, you know, there's different times. But he speaks to me heavily through dreams because he can speak vividly and give me these, you know, they're not black and white. They're color dreams. They're, I mean, that's just how it is. So with that, I'm putting this out there as a warning. It's urgent. Share with whoever. 
get with the Lord. Don't take my word for it. Maybe the Lord will reveal something to you. Maybe you can say something in the description box, I mean, in the comments, and leave me some comments, you know. Be nice, you know. I got people saying all kinds of random stuff. It's okay, and then there's people that are encouraging, and I'm just trying to do my part. I'm trying to encourage, I'm trying to warn, I'm trying to bring people closer to Christ as soon as possible. That's why I'm doing these videos. So I'm putting this one out there, and uh, I hope it reaches who it needs to reach. I pray that it does. And um, I'm just going to end with the quick ABCs like J.D. Farag, you know, A is admit that you're a sinner and that you're in need of a savior, because we all are. And uh, I'm not fully saved until he takes us out of this miry muck and gets us out of this world. It's getting, you know, worse by the day. I may be sitting in a, you know, great place. My psychics, you know, are, are reblooming every year and they look beautiful right now compared to what they did, you know, just a few weeks ago. But, hey, um, I feel like the Lord's blessed me to be where I'm at right now. And that's just you know, where I'm at in life and my family's at. So but anyways, A, just admit that you're a sinner in need of a savior because we all are. And B is you got to believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and um, he's gonna come back and get us again. And C is confessing with your mouth that he is Lord and that he did what he did and that you, you know, did you need him in your life. So confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart and you'll be saved. So just putting that out there is the last thing. I hope this has been, you know, encouragement because it's not all gloom and doom. You know, the Bible uh, clearly says in the book of Revelation that you're blessed if you read that book. It doesn't say you're cursed. doesn't say it's all oh, gloom and doom. So, you know, it's, it's not a fearful thing, you know, and it's fearful for those who don't have the hope and the understanding. And it's cheerful for those who know that they're going to escape, you know, all the things that are coming upon the earth. So uh, I'm just going to put this video out there. I've talked long enough. I just wanted to share that and uh, I hope it blesses y'all and uh, let me know in the comments. God bless.